Hi, I'm Dave, founder of Halloween Year Round. I'm here with my friend Patrick. How's it going, everyone? And we are here to discuss, uh, I guess, the final movie of the DCEU. Yep. Even Seems though it was, uh, wasn't meant to be in any way, shape, or form. Well, thing is it? Well, you know what the Penguin says in Batman Returns: things change. They do, they do, and uh, we're actually going to be doing a whole video just on that, on like the franchise as a whole later on. So stay tuned for that. But today we're mm-hmm. just talking about Aquaman two, um, just sort of a review discussion recap. Uh, We will be getting the spoiler, so fair warning. If you haven't seen it, turn this off. Go watch the movie. If you'd like to read my spoiler-free written review, I'll put a link to that in the description. And without further ado, uh, let's jump in head first. No pun intended. Yep. So uh, this movie, it starts off I from like the opening scene where, where Arthur Curry's narrating. I related to it immediately. It, mm-hmm. it, it picks up where he's a parent now. Very true. And uh, just from, you know, being around you and your family, uh, I can definitely uh, see that James Wan absolutely did his homework in portraying, uh, you know, a parent raising a child in a very messy house. <laughs> I know. I like just seeing that. I'm like, his house is a mess. Thank you for portraying that as accurate. Like, <laughs> That touches me, you know. Uh, so, you know, he's got Arthur Jr. He is trying to be king of Atlantis. And the two things are very... He's got a good system. He's got his father, Tom, to kind of babysit his son. Uh, he has his... Is she his wife or girlfriend? They don't... Yeah, like, it's... They never really fully state exactly what the relationship is in the movie. So uh, just to get this out of the way, elephant in the room. Yes. Amber Heard is in the movie. Yes. Just saying that name conjures up very strong opinions and reactions on the internet. Oh, absolutely. Myself included. (laughs) Patrick included. I will say this. Yes, she's in the movie. No, it did not recast her. No, it wasn't. It was the decisions of higher ups at D.C., Yes, it was not fair that she stayed in it and a certain other actor was removed from the third Fantastic Beast movie. However, to be fair, those were very different divisions of Warner Brothers that didn't necessarily... One was DC Studios, one was just like Warner Brothers. Not that either was the correct decision to do. I'm just... Mm. I'm, I'm addressing it now. We're here to talk about the movie. She is in it. She's not in it she was in it more than I thought. Like yeah. She, is it... She's in it throughout, but she's not really given much. She's just kind of there. Right. I, I was just going to say like, that was the biggest thing I noticed is that, yeah, while she was present in the movie, her role was significantly reduced. And I have a funny feeling that after David Zaslav, like as it entered in, he might've said, as I gave a few additional notes, maybe they weren't able to, recast her with of course how much money the movie is a movie went into production with so it is more than possible i things i noticed my my theory is that in order to get the movie to it's like roughly two hour runtime when they were looking for stuff to cut they probably removed if there were more more scenes with her and more stuff with her character that's probably what they cut out to make Mm -hmm. that runtime but she is in it I don't really want to get into that. That's not what this video is about. That's not what this channel is about. I just want to talk about the movie. So we're putting that to bed. We're just talking about the movie. All right, let's get into it. So where were we? Arthur Curry is, he's pulling double duty. He's a working parent. He's ruling Atlantis. He's dealing with the bureaucracy of the council. He's trying to raise his kid. And I, I love how it shows, you know, how, kind of frail and fragile he feels like he feels like he's not doing a good job anywhere yeah he's just pulled in several different directions and it's like i get that like i've had you know i've come into work when i had a lot of important stuff to do on like two hours sleep you know because uh you know my daughter kept me up all night you know i've been there and then he goes there and you know 
the one council person's like, oh, well, you're not even really devoted to us. You spend half your time on the surface world. And it's like, we've all had a coworker like that. <laughs> like, who, who hasn't? Yeah, it's very true. Uh, meanwhile, over here, you've got uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II back as David Kane, a.k.a. Black Manta, still on his mission of revenge, still trying to take out Aquaman and all his family and his whole kingdom with the help of uh, Jimmy Park as uh, Dr. Shin, who I love that he gets much more to do in this movie than he did in the last one. Yeah, that is true. He definitely has um, a full character arc uh, going into, is it into it from beginning to end. He he might even be the unsung hero of uh, of the movie. So anyway, Manta, you know they're 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 going through the ice of what I think is Antarctica, and and they find this, I guess this like whole kingdom frozen in the ice. Yeah, which they then explain is it later was an actual lost is it um a seventh kingdom that is it that had been uh, stricken from the, the records of Atlantis and other parts of parts of the ocean. Yes, the it, kingdom of Necris. Yes, ruled by uh, the guy who played um, Euron Greyjoy in uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, so essentially he went from uh what is it one sea kingdom to another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess in universe, we, we could pretend that that was, uh, you know, the Iron Islands became the kingdom of Necro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so he, he, he finds this dark trident that's like infused with magic and it almost like it possesses him. Yeah. To be even crazier and more ruthless than he normally is because before he's just trying to kill Aquaman. Right. And now he's like, let's destroy the world while we're at it. Yeah, I really love how they do the possession scenes was it with him and just the way he conveys that uh, insanity like throughout the movie is really well done. Like, like, I actually was like, wow, this guy is like ruthless to the core at this point. Well, it, it kind of I love the way it kind of helps with it stays in continuity, kind of the same way that the seven deadly sins were. in Shazam. Yeah. Yes. The way that the possession works is very similar to that. And I just I love that it kind of reinforced that no, this this is the same universe. And you know, dark magic does exist. And you know, this ties in, you know, all the way back to the first suicide squad with Enchantress. You know, is that like the same type of magic that she has? Yeah, is it? Yeah, because it is established, or at least for the DCU, that magic is very much a part of the world. And I have a funny feeling that that will still carry over into the new DCU. But, you know, we're going to have to wait and see on that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it, it's all unknown. But I just I, I like the way that they handled it. And, and mm -hmm. I liked I know that technically we get a new villain in the form of, you know, that king of Necris. But all I mean, ultimately, there aren't really any new characters to have to introduce in this. And I think that kind of works to the movie's advantage. It's, you know, Orm is right. back. Black yes. Manta is back. And mm -hmm. it's like the movie doesn't have to spend time setting them up and developing. Like, we know why Orm's where he is. We know where, you know, we know what motivates Black Manta. We remember all that from the first one. And mm -hmm. it allows this movie to kind of just hit the ground running without yes. having to reintroduce too much and, and do, you know, new things. So then... Um, we get, you know, he he gets this trident and he starts raiding, you know, these underwater uh, storage depots for this. Uh, I'm just going to call it unobtainium, like from Avatar, because basically yeah. what it is. Well, I mean, like, they, ca they call it Ori. Well, yeah, they call it Ori Calcum, as a, uh, which was, yeah, from the comics. But yeah, as a, but yeah it's essentially it's basically the same. unobtainium. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it could be a rare titanium, unobtainium, as a titanium, their titanium, as a everywhere titanium. <laughs> in, in, insert titanium, whatever you yes. want to call it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that that's what it is. So he gets it, and then uh, he, you know, he attacks Atlantis, and what follows is what might be my favorite scene in the movie. And I'm gonna talk more about James Wan in a bit, but I I love his directing in this movie. Yeah, we, I really we, enjoyed it too. We get like a proper like car chase scene 
but underwater. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like through the streets of Atlantis and and like mm-hmm. there's a highway over there where something's like, hey, you're you're driving past the speed limit. And, yeah. and there's people at the marketplace. There, there's these two Atlanteans on a date at this little table. And like one of the ships comes crashing through it. <laughs> yeah, I really like that, too. That was pretty funny. It, it just kind of what I love most about the first Aquaman. And the reason why it's one of my favorite movies in the DCEU was um, it's the world building. Yes. Yeah, because like I know for many years, like Aquaman, the character in the comics was always considered a joke because, oh, his power is being able to talk to f- as a fish. But people just don't realize is that the ocean like cover covers over two thirds of, of the planet Earth. And ultimately, there's things about the oceans we still don't even know about, even to this day. So being able to command all sea life, being able to talk, communicate, and coordinate it, which we definitely see, like at, especially at, like at near the end of the movie, which was mm-hmm. really well done. I Even I was like, wow, I did not, you know, see, see that coming. But I really like how they, uh, you know, were able to stop one of these, like, ultrasonic devices uh, that the villains were using with the uh, the Nautilus ships, which, man, I the, love. The whale songs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the whale songs, right. Yeah, no, it was just, I, I love the world building. I love mm-hmm. that they kind of took a character that was a joke. And it's like, I mean, let, let's be honest. Aquaman got picked on. He, he was the most emasculated of all the superheroes. Like, oh, he's not a real hero. He's a wimp. He's... Right. And yeah, they catch Jason just Momoa. Right, exactly. Like the most buff masculine guy, you know. Mm-hmm super tall muscular he's got the long hair he's right. got the tribal tattoos and he rocks the og outfit yes he the, does the gold and green he he wears yeah. it proudly and and it's like try try making fun of him wearing that exactly yeah i love the fact that james wan was very committed to doing that too which was really important that really shows that he understood um like where the love of like dc comics mm-hmm. fans as fans are like you know because yeah the outfits may look ridiculous, but you know what though? Like that's that's part of it. That's part of the entire like look and ensemble, and he rocks it proudly. He he also James Wan also takes a few chances to go full horror movie with it. Yeah, especially in the first Aquaman movie with that one scene with was it with the light dropping down in the trench? The trench, yeah. Oh, that is that still freaks me out. Like they really did an excellent job with we, that we, part. We get a little bit of that here when Manta and his team first find that you know the frozen kingdom underwater and the creatures start coming out mm-hmm. you know there there were definitely some like you know monster horror vibes to it i mean the, yeah. the, the tentacle creature yeah. reminded me a lot of the um the creature in the mist where like mm. the tentacles are coming through the, the side door of the grocery store oh yeah so that was really cool and then you know after that attack it's kind of like, hey, Arthur, you screwed up. How, you know, how could you let this happen? No one's attacked Atlantis in, in centuries. And then what commences is probably my favorite part of the movie. We get a better version of Thor the Dark World. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about Patrick Wilson. Yeah. Oh, I loved him in this role. He really did an excellent job. This is his, I believe, sixth time working with James Wan. They know each other very well. They've done yeah. horror movies, mm-hmm. and now they've done two Aquaman movies. And you can yeah, really I, tell that Juan knows how to get the best performance out of him. Yeah, I love him in the Conjuring film, was a films personally, and you know, once again, he just does an excellent jo- the job as uh, the Ocean Master slash, as a slash worm character. And he shows such range. I mean, in in Conjuring, mm-hmm. he he's playing this you know very religious, very like you know lawful good you know character of uh you know this this ghost hunter demonologist and then you see him going in insidious uh two where he's possessed by parker crane and he's having to be a serial killer and i remember there were a few moments in the first aquaman when when he kills the one uh uh fish king mm-hmm. where he has that same crazed look in his eyes i'm like That's right that in insidious two yes and I think this one kind of brings it full circle where Orm gets a really interesting arc where, you know, you, you kind of understood he was, 
I mean, yeah, he wanted to destroy the surface world. But I mean, as the council points out to Aquaman, like actually they kind of are destroying our everything. I mean, not that destroying them was the right way to do it, but I, I'm saying he was he wasn't unjustified in doing something. Yeah, it's just the violent. We're going as I'm going to like you know wipe wipe out the entire population of the surface world isn't necessarily like I think the right diplomatic approach. <laughs> well, okay. When when in history has any leader or king taken the right diplomatic approach and not taken the well, let's just wipe them out, <laughs> you know, solution. That right nine times out of ten in history, that's what people do. I'm yes. not saying it's right, but it's what right. people tend to do. Yeah, you have a point there, sadly. <laughs> people are dicks. What can I say? <laughs> so I, I really, I think if, if the kind of world building and the crazy visuals of like seahorse and shark cavalry, that's sort of like the exterior varnish around the movie. Mm -hmm. I think the heart of the movie, the thing that really holds it together is that dynamic and chemistry between Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson. Yes. You know, they they make quite the odd couple. And, and I know there's going to be a million comparisons. I made one to Thor The Dark World. I think this does it better. Yeah, and, I would agree with you. And I'll tell you why. I think first and foremost, Arthur and Orm, are so different not not just in in the types of things they're willing to do but even just in their personalities and in their temperament and like you 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 have arthur who's i mean let, let's be honest he's a surfer bro yeah he, he's the type of guy that you'd want to grab a drink with or, or something or, or or hang out with orm kind of doesn't have a sense of humor he kind of takes everything too seriously. He takes himself too seriously. And everything he does, even the horrible things he does, he's like, you know, this is what I must do, you know, because it, it's it's either for the greater good or it's the honorable thing to do. Right. Yeah, I definitely, like, especially back in the day, I used to really take myself too seriously, which I've been working on myself. So I definitely saw, I could still see quite a bit of myself in that character. You know, you, from that you, perspective. You never tried to destroy the surface world, did you? No, 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 absolutely not. All right. I wouldn't go that far. Not yet. I mean, you <laughs> never know. <laughs> no, but well, I just that, well, that's the reason why you're that's the reason why you're here to, you know, keep me in check. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let, let me be the Arthur to your orm. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> no, but I just I, I loved how you know, and, and even went back and, and showed, you know, those clips from the first one where Arthur says to him, like, as soon as I found out I had a brother, a brother, I just wanted to meet you. So you knew that you weren't alone. And it's like their lack of having a childhood together. This kind of is that for them. This, this like this mission is their way of bonding. It yeah. is their way of, of, you know, realizing that they're both. They're more alike than they care to admit. Mm hmm. That's very true. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I really, it could have very easily have not worked. Mm -hmm. And I think they, you know, they put the characters first. Right. And I, pro I, I know, I promise I wouldn't mention this person again, but in the first movie, he goes on the mission with Mira. And there's definitely an imbalance of like, Jason Momoa's performance and Amber Heard's performance. And I'm not just saying that to say that was something I said back when the first one came out before all the other stuff happened, before we knew all the other stuff. That right. was just something that I felt about the first movie. Here you've got Momoa and Wilson both on their A game. And I think that's why I might even like this one better than the first Aquaman. Hmm. I kind of have to sit on a little bit more, but it was at least as good. Yeah, I would definitely uh, agree with you there. Uh, so then we get to, you know, they I, they kind of explore the seedy underbelly of the ocean, which I again with the world building, there's an underwater Moss Eisley. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was really cool to see. And especially with like uh, some of the shark, like the, the shark bouncers, I like immediately went as I thought to myself, hey, 
they kind of look like King Shark from the Suicide Squad. I'm thinking, yeah, like, species. yes, that exactly. So I love that kind of connection too, like visually. That was really mm -hmm. excellent. And then we get um, a very small part from Martin Short as as this like, I guess he's like the job of the hut of you know underwater. Yeah, like he's like a fi like he's like a fish boss who is like, yeah who basically like has his all as a wealth and power and. Like, so it, if if this fish gangster kills someone, does he send people to sleep with the fish? Like they're already doing that. <laughs> does he send them to like sleep with the squirrels on the land? Yeah, I guess that'd be the case. Sleep with the, the gophers in the dirt or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. These are the <laughs> questions we need answered, James Wan. Yes. Uh, so they kind of go on this mission, which, of course, you know, leads them to this big final battle, uh, you know, with Black Manta and all his crew and this, you know, ancient kingdom trying to come back. And as you know, as you mentioned, Patrick, this kind of ingenious move to disable their, you know, their sonic boom, like, let, let's use the power of the ocean yes, against them. Exactly. I, I really love, like I said, I just love visually how they did that. As, and ultimately, like how they were able to destroy like that Nautilus uh, sh ship, because that was like another thing I really loved about the movie um, was one like visually the designs of the Nautilus sh the ship that Black Manta used, along with the uh, the uh, pods that that mm -hmm. would go around the like you know taking the Ori Calicum. I, I just love visual designs like that. Like it definitely like harkened back to like classic like adventure pulp era, era designs it, which it was really very cool. twenty thousand leagues under the sea yeah yeah and i Just even the, like the, the look of it yes i even mentioned that too, too like in the theater when, when i turned to you and, and i then said and they searched for captain nemo for twenty thousand leagues and nights i mean that's that's the ship they would have used and and to think that yep. was that was like an ancient atlantean ship that still worked right yeah, I really, like I said, just love that kind of design. I mean, even like the villains outfits too, like the crew members, like I said, like that very, uh, you know, like uh, the button down fl as it flaps, like, you know, like an all, is it all black? Was it with the uh, the edge of as it yellows? Like I just, once again, just like those kind of bombardier jackets. They, know, they, their outfits reminded me a lot of the first X, the X-Men 2000. Hmm. Like the kind of black leather with the, you know, the, the ridges and the stripes. Yeah, and weirdly enough, um, even to re mention like the CW's Flash, uh, with the first version of um, or at least the the fake is a Brad Gar is a Garrett impersonator uh from so from that series up. Uh, oh yeah, a little bit of spoiler for the Flash is it for the Flash season two? Uh, they definitely had a moment where is it where he had like that kind of bombardier jacket look. So yeah, like I have a funny feeling they might have taken a cue from that show as a show as well. For the design mm -hmm. uh so anyways you know they they get to the final battle black manta kidnaps his baby oh yeah um and, and also it was just really funny like all the crazy rumors that mo this movie had swirling around and the biggest one was that they were going to kill the baby is a baby well spoiler alert that doesn't happen <laughs> if Zack snyder had directed it, it might have happened yeah i could sadly believe that i mean you know you had henry cavill superman like killing like unborn kryptonian children so uh yeah i could absolutely believe that sadly <laughs> no but i just i i really liked um i really liked how what's his name shin gets that um like the whole time you're you're thinking that he's like you clearly see he's not comfortable doing what they're doing yeah you know he yeah. he, yeah, he just wanted to see atlantis and and again he kind of ends up being the unsung hero yes. where he's the one who saves the baby he's the one and, and yeah. he's the one who's like here let me let me help you and it's like if he had just reached out to arthur from the start or if he had gone that route things could have gone very differently and I love that he gets a redemptive arc. Mm -hmm. Orm gets a redemptive arc. Yeah, I was I I was actually on the edge of my seat when it came to that part because I did not know if he was going to like turn back as a back and you know like like James Wan surprised me you know like the direction he went with that character. It's the look that Patrick Wilson gives. You never know. 
Right, exactly. And once again, it shows how excellent Patrick Wilson is as an actor. And then I kind of like that um, Black Manta did not get a redemptive arc. Yeah. They set it up where like he, he's, you know, Arthur's about to save him from falling to his death. And ev- any other movie would have him save him and be like, listen, I'm really sorry about, you know, your father. I was wrong. I forgive you. And it would have been like a, the like the Spider Man three moment with Sandman. Yeah. And I kind of liked that they didn't do that. I kind of liked that it kind of made the statement like some people are, you know, can have redemptive works. Others can't. This guy, like he was already a pirate before. He, you know, he, right. he was not a very good person mm-hmm. even before all this right. stuff happened. Yeah, it's true. And just like as his own character and personality was we seen from the prior movie like into this you can i just knew that you know like in my heart he was just he was never going to allow himself to be saved by aquaman mm-hmm. he would rather you know like die as a die as a die with his own with his own you know like by his own creed if that makes any sense which he did yes so uh just to kind of wrap things up you know th- this movie Again, loved the world building, loved everything with with Arthur and Orm. I loved how its ultimate theme, it, you know, obviously it has the environmental themes with, you know, the the unobtainium is destroying the, the planet and we have to stop it and all that. Mm-hmm. I love that Arthur kind of, he realizes, no, we need to work with the surface world. And he right. kind of makes that first contact. That's true. It, and, it has and... that Black Panther moment where he yes. comes out to the UN. Mm-hmm. Yep, is a yep, uh, in, uh, uh, championing unity, you know, working together, and of course the famous line of "I am Aquaman" to ultimately cl- as a close out. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> I that had to be added in in the reshoots when they knew <laughs> it was going to end, because then it makes the DCEU end on the same note the MCU started on, full right. circle synergy. Mm-hmm. And I just, I kind of, I love. I know it's a Orm's words and speech to him at the end were a little on the nose, where he's like, you know, you are a great king because you're not afraid to ask for help from his worst enemy and you're not like yes it was a little on the nose but i felt that especially when he's like you are better at this than you think you are because who among us hasn't felt that imposter syndrome that you know right. we're not good enough either at our job as a parent like you you always feel like you're failing and, and you dwell on your own failures more than you do your own successes and i like that this kind of tapped into that i agree with that because sometimes really the worst enemy you can face is yourself and it's learning to mm-hmm. you know ex- ex- accept that and to say to yourself i am better than that mm-hmm. and i and, as, and i know that i'm or that i'm already is it great at doing this just no, I, keep, just... I mean especially with the way uh arthur's father said keep pushing forward mm-hmm. even on the days you feel as a feel defeated keep pushing forward that really spoke a lot to me. That's like, how that it's was done. Uh, yep, that's like so, that was one of my favorite <clears throat> favorite moments in the movie too. I just I loved how it kind of just ended on that note. I love that they faked Orm's death so he yes. can, you know, doesn't have to go back to prison and he can go explore the world. I tell you, I would watch a movie or show just of him exploring the surface world. Yeah. And like and having that sort of like everything is his first time experiencing right. everything i i would watch patrick Wilson do that but sadly as we know this marks the end of the dceu uh a franchise that had a lot of ups and a lot of downs yeah unfortunately and i'll say this you know like i said i'm gonna do another video kind of more on that later but mm-hmm. if this is to be the movie that it ends on i'm glad it ends on a good movie yeah i would agree with that one I I wasn't a fan of like the way the DCEU began with Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. It's personally my least favorite as of as of all the DCEU movies. But at the same time, though, it did get progressively a bit better over time. I mean, especially with Shazam, which is definitely one of mm-hmm. my personal favorites, and um, and uh, even Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was a great like you know uh you know family coming together story, which I really liked. And I know like certain things from certain movies are going to become like moving forward with the D is it with the new DCU, um, especially with the Suicide Squad uh, under J- is it James Gunn's leadership. So uh, 
yeah, like, you know, we ended on a good note, but let's also look to the future. Exactly. I, th I think that's sort of the note we want to end it on. Any final thoughts on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom? Uh, I would just say overall, I really enjoyed it myself. I definitely enjoyed it like more than I thought as I thought I was going to. I mean, I enjoyed the first Aquaman movie, but I definitely there were some things about this that definitely elevated it as up higher on my as on my ranking for best DCEU movies. Uh, like I said, love the characterizations. Patrick Wilson did an excellent job along with Momoa. And um, uh, oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention: uh, the musical, uh, the soundtrack was really oh, excellent yes. es especially that sci-fi retro style like with the chase scenes in particular mm -hmm. i loved how they did that that definitely felt like i said like very pulp adventure like you know like harkening back to like a like like an older time but with a but with a bit of a you know you know modern twist if that makes any sense which i did like and i thought that was really cool so yeah like all that stuff really uh you know it's definitely a great movie to check out. So, like, you know, so please go, go see, see it, it right. so it yeah. doesn't flop. Right. Uh, <laughs> go see it over your Christmas and or New Year's break. Go check it out. Go see yeah. it in the theater. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, let it be a high point to end the DCEU on. Yep. So uh, I think that's all from me. That's all from you. That's all uh, from me. Like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. If you don't, you may end up stuck in the ice with a bunch of underwater demon dweller people. And yep. as always, every day is Halloween.